Hey everybody, welcome back to the Homestead. I'm Joe and today we're going to be going over how to inoculate and use biochar on your homestead. We're here at Baker's Green Acres with Mark. Let's jump into this. This is the Anyone Can Farm Experience. <laughs> All right, so when we're talking biochar, what actually is biochar? Okay, well, biochar is a product that is made uh, out of carbon-based materials. So this would be, this is hardwood right here. Um, this piece is kind of wet, wouldn't make good biochar, but it is wood, and you can see it's pretty dense. Uh, but when we run it through the process, the pyrolysis process, we get just 100% carbon, right, or nearly 100% carbon. Um, the method that we do it is in an oxygen-deprived environment, and all the things that are in it that are not carbon are cooked out of it, right, or roasted out of it, basically. A gas off is what they call it. And um, this is used for the several applications, but as far as going into soils, um, it has a couple of things that it does really well. It retains moisture really well. So if I waterlog this, let's say I put this in water and I hold it under, it would float naturally, but if I hold it under, it'll become waterlogged and then it's really hard to dry it out. It will really retain that moisture. So if you have really dry sandy soils, uh, this will aid in keeping those soils moist. Uh, dry sandy soils, because they're dry and sandy, they don't propagate life, right? So this, another uh, uh, strong point of biochar is that it's sort of like an apartment building. There's a lot of surface area in here, a lot of little nooks and crannies that microbiological life can move into and then thrive in this carbon rich environment. And when they thrive in here, then they're in the soil and um, there's a process that goes on of bacteria and protozoa and the protozoa eat the bacteria and then they manure out uh, nutrient that can be used by plant and animal alike. But this is the first step in protecting that microbiological life in soils that are sandy. And if you have soils that are really heavy, that are retaining too much water, this can open them up so uh, you know it'll suck up the water and allow uh, the, the soils to dry in a way and it actually makes a really good environment for the microbiological life in that case. There's a long history that goes into biochar and it doesn't always involve man of course so uh, let's say that you've got a forest and it's got a lot of deadfall on the ground and you have a forest fire that goes through. It's kind of nature's way of cleansing the forest floor. And when that happens, you're going to have a fair share of the deadfall turn into <clears throat> biochar, because when there's a heavy, heavy flame going on, you're creating an oxygen deprived environment and you're going to have this. Um, there are some places where we see biochar in the environment that was created by man and this technology goes way back. Uh, there are places in South America where they've found what they call terra preta and it's uh, soils that are really fragile and then you'll have this big round area where the soils are really deep and I think in the 70s from what I've read they thought it was aliens, right? But then they find out that they do some digging around and here's some pottery, here's some beads, oh, here's some human remains. Oh, there was people living here. And it looks like they were making charcoal and they were adding it to the soil because the soils there are really sandy and really light, they say, they call them bitter soils. And um, so the long, long ago they were, they were doing this and the soils are some, in some cases, six feet thick. Right. 
and extremely fertile in the middle of jungles that are mostly sand. So that's a little bit about what I know about it. There's probably 10 times more that I don't know about it, but I, I do know how it's benefited us in the way that we've used it. There, there is a debate out there about the use of biochar raw versus inoculated. So let me explain what that is. This biochar just came out of the retort and it is bone dry, right? The temperatures in there reach way up there, like 2000 degrees. So it is bone dry. There is no moisture in this at all. So this would be classified as raw biochar. And um, it's sold raw. You can, you can buy it just like this. It's very light, so it's usually sold by volume. Um, and there's a caution out there about adding it to your soils. Because it's raw, uh, it will take nutrient out of your soils. And that's true, because the nutrient that's in the soil, the bacteria, the microbiological life, is going to be drawn into this. So it's not going to be available in as great a numbers to your plant life as you would as you would like so then you say okay well then how do I turn that around well what you want to do is inoculate this so that means you want to load this with microbiological life and there are a couple of ways that we do it that I want to pass on to you say a compost pile like this and all this really is, is last year's manure that I scooped up, piled right here. The pile was four times as big as this, and I've used, this is all that's left, and it was left here during the winter, as you can see. So this pile is not active right now, but all that life that's in it is dormant right now. Um, so I can add biochar to this, and I already did. This pile, I already did that last, last spring when the pile was active. So you can see how this manure has broken down into just rich, dark soil. So I can add biochar to this, and the biochar being in this pile will become inoculated. The microbiological life that's in this pile will migrate into the biochar and be protected within that biochar in those little apartment buildings. Um, the next way to do it, which is even better, I think, is to make something like this. This would be taking this compost, a finished compost, and then making you up some nice compost tea bags, put it in warm water, this is warm water, and then leave this sit in the sun for a day or so, or a couple days, or a week. And what you'll have there is you'll have water that is full of microbiological life. It's just teeming with it. And then you can put it in a sprayer and you can spray it on your biochar and keep that, that pile of biochar in a pile for a little while so the, the life that's in there can migrate throughout the bag. That would be a really good thing. And the idea of making this compost tea is the microbiological life in here, we want it to be as diverse as possible. So any place that we can collect up material that is rich in microbiological life, we want to do that. And we don't want to just get it from this farm, we want to take it anywhere we can find it. Like the, if, if you go to your in-laws house and they have a pile of leaves that they raked up last year, grab a baggie full of it, add it to this. Uh, go out in the woods and find a place under trees that hasn't been disturbed in a while and pull the leaves back and get some soil out of there. So you would diversify your microbiological life and then you're inoculating your biochar with it. But in my opinion, there's even a better way than that. Uh, if you take raw biochar and you inoculate it, and then you feed it to your animals. It's gonna increase their gut, what's called gut biome, which is the microbiological life that's in their gut. You know, we are, we're basically an animal, but we have plant life within us. And the biochar that is ingested 
is going to benefit that plant life in us and become inoculated as it passes through their digestive system. So you might say, well, how am I going to get my animals to eat that? Well, we'd like to show you that. Hey guys, if you're finding this info helpful about biochar and compost and all this stuff, go ahead and give us a like. And if you want to see more, feel free to subscribe. We got a lot more of uh, you know soil stuff and biochar content coming your way. Don't miss it. All right, so I remember when we first moved to this property, there was uh, we're standing here in the front yard, and I remember there was like almost a crust, like a like a desert. You know, if you walk in a desert, there's like that lichen and there's a crust and you can like step through it. I remember it being like that here. Yeah. And now it's not the greatest time of year, No. but uh, it's grass, you, you know? You can't see it because the grass is coming up through. But uh, <laughs> we had a, uh, we made compost with biochar in it and made a spreader that spread it in a certain way. So I was, surmising that if I spread the compost uh, out, the microbiological life is getting spread out, and then it's subject to the sun, it's subject to the drying, and it's not, it's not like when these guys go out into the field, the cows go out into the field, and they drop a manure pile, right? You have this moist pile, and life just thrives under that pile. And then the next year, you'll see a ring around it of green. And the next year, the ring gets even a little bit bigger. And then after a while, if you're grazing your cattle uh, religiously, the rings connect up. And uh, the fertility just propagates through the field. So the spreader that we built is designed so as you're applying it, it, it leaves small piles of uh, of compost with biochar in it. So we've been throwing compost on this for a while, but it wasn't really until we started throwing biochar out here that it seemed like it actually stuck. Cause it, we would have like a bloom and then doom where it would just, that's, it would come up and then it would just die. Yeah, It that's couldn't true. hang on to this ground. That's true. Yeah, you get, you get a flush of life, but it couldn't sustain it. So if you look at this now, I mean, you actually look at it. I see green right now. And it's, it's interesting that we can show you this with the snow on it, that I'm seeing these little grasses that are poking up and get and saying, hey, let's go, let's go, come on. We, let's not wait here, let's, let's live. But there's actually green grass out here. I can see brand new green shoots coming up through here. All right, so Mark's spreader system is pretty cool. Um, we're gonna go check out, this is something he made right here on the farm uh, with some specific things in mind for spreading biochar and compost. So we're gonna go check that out right now. All right, so let's look at the uh, construction here. What all have you built this out of? Okay, this was made out of a uh, 300 gallon fuel tank. And you see these all over on American farms. Um, this one had a weak spot in it, and so it wound up at the junkyard, and that's where we got it. Okay, so what we're basically looking at here is uh, I built a door, and the door is big enough so I can come over with the front end loader and I can drop uh, material right down into here. So here's my compost pile right here. I would scoop some of that up and drop it down in there. Uh, when it's full, and it's 300 gallons, so it will take a yard. It'll take one yard of material. Then close up the door. There's a rod that goes in it to hold it. And then you'll notice I made all these holes. I cut them with an oxygen acetylene uh, torch. At first, I made them a lot smaller. And then I would notice as I went along, it wasn't dropping out very fast. So I went back and I made them a little bit bigger. They're about two inches now is where I think is a good spot. And what happens is as I'm going along, you know, it's got a tow bar on the front of it. 
you can see this tow bar here. And I can connect it right onto whatever I want to tow this around. I can tow it around with a Jeep or I can put the kids up in front here pulling it. That works pretty good too. Um, and what it will do is it'll leave a pattern of little dots of compost and char. And they'll be, sometimes they'll be three quarters of an inch high. So they're almost these little semi-circles of just spots all over the lawn. And I think that that's a better method than, than, than just broadcasting it because you're making these little self-sufficient little worlds similar to what you see when the cows go out and they manure out in the field. I think it's very similar. And when we started using this, we immediately saw results, you, immediately. Um, if we just take it out there and broadcast it, well, then we get a rain and it gets washed away. Or the next day, you know, we'll broadcast it at night. The next day the sun comes up, it's a hot day. A lot of the bacteria gets beat up or killed. Um, but this method seems to preserve quite a bit of it. There we go, guys. Another video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope we, uh, you know, we're able to educate you on biochar and some compost and practices there. Um, if you're interested in seeing how we feed it to our animals in a safe way and the benefits therein, go ahead and click this video. And we'll catch you guys in the next one.